If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up, everyone? Thrall Smell here once again. I am the Croc Nick. And I am Jam and John. And we are back with a retro review. This week, honestly, there really wasn't much new coming out, so we decided to kind of bring back the whole retro review thing, since you guys seem to really like the Disincarnate review we did, which was a fantastic album. Yes. So we're going to do a double header for a band that seemed to disappear for no reason, <laughs> and really kind of got the whole tech death thing really going a little bit later in the 2000s and late 90s. We're talking about Necrophagist. And we are going to go over both of their albums, Onset of Future Faction, that came out in 1999, and Epitaph, which came out in 2004. So, this band formed in 1992 in Germany by the guitarist and pretty much principal songwriter, Mohamed Suizmez. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> I really tried to practice because I looked at the word and like, I don't know what he, to do there. He was, well, while we were setting up, he was down here going, Suizmez, Suizmez. I think that's right. I even checked the pronunciation sites, and I'm kind of close, I think. <laughs> this band, for only having two albums, were really pioneers in technical death metal, namely in terms of making it more extreme. Yes. This became more mechanical, more precise, with their input into the scene, namely. Now, they had two demos before their full lengths came out, and I'm just going to briefly touch on them. Requiems of Fester Gore, which came out in 92, and simply titled Necrophages, that came out in 95. Now, those were decidedly different than what came out in terms of the later stuff. It was definitely more raw, more yeah. straightforward death metal. Definitely technical, but not technical to the degree that would follow. And there were a lot of lineup changes. In fact... <laughs> Onset of Future Faction, which we're going to touch on first here, is pretty much only Muhammad on there. He did pretty much everything in the original version, and then later when Willetip picked it up and reissued it in 2004 or 2003, he got Hans Grossman, who would later join the band, to pretty much do all the drum samples and drum which, programming. Which again. was a great idea, because we went back and listened to the, the original release, and you can definitely tell their programmed drums... Yeah, it's but mainly then, the cymbals. Yeah, the cymbals really sound... The, cymbals, uh, the snare was a little yuck, too. Once Hans Grossman came into play, I didn't know they were programmed drums. <laughs> now, Muhammad definitely did all the stuff on here, except for a few guest spots in here. Uh, I believe it is Yochen or Yochen Bittman, who guests on bass on, I believe, one track, and then Bjorn Volmer, who does leads on Extreme Unction, which I think is a highlight yeah, on this that's, album. Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs off that record, for sure. When I first heard this album, I honestly had not heard anything like this. The level of precision on this is almost machine-like. Honestly, I think if you typed in Tech Death into a supercomputer and was like, alright, generate me a song, it would generate this album. Yep. Now, you can definitely tell... It's a one-man project, namely because the focus is primarily on one instrument, that is the guitars. and Which isn't a bad thing. Muhammad is a fantastic guitarist. Lots of really technical, intricate leads, and you hear this throughout this entire album, and touches of neoclassical playing, which really made them stand out. As much as the music can sound robotic, the leads never do. They really actually mm -hmm. sound like there's a lot of feel to them, a lot of nuance. Mm -hmm. Although, Onset of Putrefaction had less of that neoclassical touch. Yeah, this was, it, it was more about brutality. Yeah, it was more straightforward. I mean, I guess in Necrophage's sense, straightforward. But it was less, I think, flashy than yeah. Epitaph was. I mean, it was still very riffy, but the riffs, of course, were complex. And this is still where he was sort of uh, doing a little bit of carcass worship in terms of mm -hmm. the song titles, like Intestinal Incubation. Honestly, that song has a lot of touches on it that remind me a lot of Death, albeit far more technical. And if we're talking about neoclassical playing, the closing track, Fermented Awful Discharge, has quite possibly the best solo on it. This is quite possibly one of the most beautiful moments in their entire career, just because this is a distinctly, distinctly <laughs> pretty melody. And it's it, over a very brutal song, too. Yes. So it's yes. a really cool contrast there. And honestly, on this album... The thing I liked versus the next album, which we'll get to, is vocally I think he was a little bit more committed to yes. like yes. nice, heavier cadences. And more words just in general. Yeah. There was a lot more that went into it vocally. He was he was a man of 
few words later on, but the words on here, there was actually some interesting cadences and such, and I really got into that. Especially on Advanced Corpse Tumor, I really think he actually shown off some really cool vocal mm -hmm. flair on that. Mm -hmm. Granted, he stays in that kind of low guttural burp, but it's the intonation and the crafting of the cadences mm -hmm. that I really liked, mm -hmm. at least versus the other album. But, I mean, there are some parts in here that are just sort of tech for the sake of tech, I think. Like, to breathe in a casket. It has some really fun parts in it, but the main verse riff has a pinch harmonic in it that sounds yeah, it sounds like the cardiogram of a cat on meth. Yeah. Like it's just like okay, just shut it up. I mean still, you know, for the fact that there really was nothing at this time period that sounded like that, I mean why not get throw it in? I mean it's it's one of those things that's like, yeah, it's different, but different doesn't necessarily equal good. And I mean outside of that, that really isn't much of an issue here. If you love that ridiculous level of syncopation where it almost seems beyond human, there's a good chance you probably own this album. Right. If you right. like technical death metal. Because that is what this album is all about. But it is also about like brutality too. And they really do kind of park a good balance between technical play that's melodic, but also brutal, heavy riffs. It took me forever to find this record. I found it in 2006 at a Sounds of the Underground tour, you know, because this was before music was readily available everywhere. So before the internet really picked up. Picked it up for 10 bucks. And <laughs> I want to say I got these both at the same time, and I listened to them rapidly for a while. Like, honestly, I wasn't huge into technical play outside of maybe, like, you know, Death, Circa Human, and individual thought patterns and such. And then, you know, maybe some, like, the later Gorgut stuff. But this was definitely different. It was unbelievably fast yes. and unbelievably heavy. But, like I said, again, the guitar playing was what really drew me in. Like, it was very intricate. But over the course of listening to it, there are a lot of repeated tricks mm -hmm. on here, but they're still really good tricks. The second to last track on the album, Extreme Unction, that's been, I think, a favorite since the very first time I heard it. That song just gets stuck in my head. It has and a solid hook. And it's notably heavier, I think, than most stuff on the album. There's not as much going on as far as overly flashy technicality, whereas it's just got some driving riffs in it. And that one definitely makes it stand out a little bit. Now, granted, like, you know, there are some, like, extremely nuts sweeps and stuff, which, yes. I mean, Muhammad was definitely known for that. But that one definitely stood out to me as just, like, all right, this is going to be maybe a bit more straightforward. And I think it resulted in a really great song that mm -hmm. had just a sick main riff to it. Yes. Now, I think that kind of changed my opinion over time when it came down to listening to this for the fact that the two demos at the end from their 1995 demo, simply titled Necrophagist, actually, I ended up enjoying those a little bit more than a good chunk of this just because it actually sounded like a real band. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it had a little bit of that, you know, more straightforward 90s, very riffy death metal, but it also had that technical element, so it was a really good balance, you know, versus something that was, you know, more organic to something that was more machine-like. It was a really stark contrast, and honestly, like, probably way back when, I probably skipped over those tracks just because, like, eh, it doesn't sound like this. And honestly, newfound appreciation for those demo tracks. But overall, solid debut album yeah. for these guys, oh, yeah. and it really kind of got something going. So overall, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. This is a solid album, a good starter for Tech Death. I'm not as much into Tech Death these days. You know, the overly processed sound and very machine-like sound, yeah. it kind of takes with the human element, and that's just something I really like about metal in general. I, I like that more raw sound here lately. But you can't help but to be <laughs> just stunned by the guitar work alone. It is ridiculously good. And I definitely still enjoy jamming this one. I'm also going to give it three and a half stars. This was, again, I, I'd never heard anything like this. But I got these records out of order. The first one I heard was Epitaph. And so this, I bought it just because I was so in love with Epitaph. I was like, ooh, another necrophagist. And I bought it. And, and I like it, but I don't like it as much yeah. as the, the one that followed it. So, yeah, three and a half. 
So we move ahead to 2004, and we get Epitaph, which was released on Relapse Records. This was the first one where he had a full band. And it shows. Hans Grossman returned on drums. Not programmed this time. This was this guy's inhuman ability. I was going to say, just brilliant drum work. Again, I had never heard anything <laughs> like that. And the, the fact that it's so disgustingly syncopated and like everything is just on point. Those gravity blasts are absolutely insane. He, he's a madman. Brings in Christian Munzer on guitars, who would later go on to join Obscura, and Hans Grossman would actually pop up in there for a little bit too. And Stephen Filmers on bass. Now, this was a bit of a change in terms of the lyrical schemes, because it went from the more you know death metal tropes, gore, and kind of some carcass worship, to more philosophical subjects. But I have to say, it really doesn't matter because this is the one where Muhammad doesn't say very much. No, it's just uh, the, a collection of growls. <laughs> it, it's just these sporadic growls. And that was kind of a thing that kind of turned me off, was the vocal cadences got really dull. But the thing that turned me on was the musicianship was even better, surprisingly. Yeah. Like, I mean, granted, I knew he had like a caliber bunch of players there, but the musicianship is insane on here. And the fact that he had another guitarist to work with and harmonize with that had maybe just a slightly different style than him, there was a cool contrast there. Well, and it seems like a more cohesive thought, too. You know, when you're not just one dude writing all the stuff, you know, and you and you. Pretty do... sure he was writing all the yeah. stuff, but. Well, I mean, bringing other musicians, it's going to change up the sound, and it just sounded like a incredibly well oiled machine. Namely, <laughs> the fact that the bass was very prominent on here, and that too. F- Fimmers is amazing on this, pretty much matching the technical put out that you know both Muhammad and Christian were putting out, mm-hmm. matching it with his own little technical flair as well, and. I mean, it was just fantastic. Stillborn One, absolutely insane rhythms on this song. And this was also an album where they brought in a little bit more on the dissonant melodies. Yes. Like, you didn't really hear that very much on Onset. It was definitely more uh, riff-driven, but like technical riffing. This was technical riffing, but mixed in with really cool dissonant melodies that really yep. kind of set some atmosphere. There's which, a lot more melody yeah. in this album than there was in the first one. And atmosphere wasn't really a big thing on Onset. It was just pretty much straightforward brutality. Like, the songs were one after the other mm-hmm. after the other. It was just firing off shotgun shells. This, they actually took a little bit of time to sort of, you know, build up some songs. Only Ash Remains. One of my favorite tracks on here, mainly because that opening guitar harmony between Christian and Muhammad is just mm-hmm. insane. Sweeps, arpeggios, a blur of movement... And the fact that you have the bassist moving on in his own little rhythm, too, it's its absolutely nuts. And the lead breaks on this album are fantastic. The way he makes the sound of that guitar flow is just, it's incredible. It still doesn't sound overproduced, it just sounds like everything is more present. But those guitar solos, that guitar tone is so pretty. Very compressed, but I can kind of understand why it is, because mm-hmm. you want to hear every individual note, and you can. You can hear pretty much every single note they hit, clear as a bell. Mm-hmm. Seven, one of the first songs I ever heard from them. There Me was too. on a relapse sampler. Yep. I don't think it was one of the Contaminated series. I really like this song. It's really interesting intro riff, this interesting polyrhythm that comes in. But it kind of loses me when it starts breaking into the verses because this is one of those moments I would say is almost overly technical and just sort of kind of almost messy. It's probably the messiest section on the entire album, which it kind of stands up because the rest of the album is so super precise. Symbiotic in theory. Again, I I think it's probably the heaviest song on on this album, too. Seven Stab Wound. I I really don't have a, a not favorite on the album. I, to this day, I still jam Necrophages. It's been in my phone, it's been on every MP3 player I've ever owned, but I still jam that album. It's a really good album. I think one of my issues with it is it kind of plateaus in intensity. Like, after a handful of tracks, you're really not going to hear it get much more heavy or much more intense. And it kind of starts to run together a little bit, yep. which is kind of an issue. But again, the skill, the guitar playing, the bass playing, like all the musicianship in here is just absolutely top notch. Again, I've, I've never heard anything like that, and still to this day, there's not many people, there, there's people that come close, but nobody does it with the, the flair that Necrophages did it. And there's still nobody, in my opinion, that's that type. So overall, 
for me, I'm going to give this one four stars. In terms of tech death, I think this is one of the best examples of it. It actually has melody and really distinct moments. The guitar playing is top notch. I absolutely love the lead trade offs on this. And like I said, that has the most human touch to them, I think. Mm -hmm. Everything else sounds inhuman as hell, but those leads actually have a lot of feel. They definitely emote something. And I think it's very enjoyable to listen to in terms of like more brutal music. If you're looking for something more technical, who wouldn't recommend this? Right, right. Again, I do think it kind of plateaus and turns into sort of a blur of notes in some spots, and it kind of loses its sense, but when it strikes back up to a really dynamic moment, it usually holds your attention really yeah. well. So. Strong recommend. Yep. I'm going to give it four and a half. And the only reason I don't give it five is because there was only two albums. And that was like the dirtiest thing ever. Like, how are you going <laughs> to how are you gonna release two banger albums and then quit? And then not only quit, but fall off the face of the earth. And, you know, Muhammad, at least, I don't think has done anything since then. And what a fucking shame to be that good of a guitar player and a songwriter... And, and just throw in the towel. And believe me, I looked around for all this stuff. Like, I really, yep. I was genuinely curious as to what happened because I remembered, you know, magazine saying, oh, they're they're in the studio, they're working on, they're going to do something all on seven string guitars. That's exactly what Muhammad said. And time just kept going by. Christian left in 2006, joined the Skira. He was replaced by Sammy Rotti Kanan, I think. He was only in the band from 2006 to 2010. Hans left in 2007, joined Obscura, and then joined everyone else, like anyone else yeah, who right? had you know, a need for a solid drummer. <laughs> he was in Blotted Science, he was in Hate Eternal. I'm probably missing a lot of bands he drummed for because the dude's fantastic. And he was briefly replaced by Marco Minimum, who actually showed up in their Summer Slaughter appearance, in their first one, I think, in 2007. Which would have been a treat, because yep. Marco Miniman's a beast, too. I have the DVD, Ugh. and it, I gotta watch this drum solo. He was incredible. You ever want to watch him do some really crazy stuff? Look up a band called The Aristocrats, the three-piece uh, with Brian Beller and Guthrie Govan, and it's nasty. He's a nasty drummer. They even played with uh, Stephen Wilson, too. Yep. And yep. Elogicist, which was another cool tech death band. Marco eventually left the band in 2008. He was replaced by Romain Goulin, and he was the one that pretty much broke the news that Necrophages was no more. He was giving repeated you know, updates, like, over oh, in the studio, we're crafting songs. Yep. They even showed up on Summer Slaughter 2009 or something like that, yep. and ten. they were playing new tracks. There were new songs yeah, there. Well, like. yeah, because when uh, he joined the band, he did a, a drum video, like a play along video, and it was a new song, and everybody was all excited, and then you kept getting Rickrolled on YouTube. Yep. Ugh. And pretty much he would keep updating people, and then eventually in 2016, he just simply said, The band is dead. We're going to need a coffin for this band, or something to that effect. And. All of it, honestly, I think it kind of falls on Muhammad. I mean, he's been the brain behind this, and I just don't know what happened. Like, we've had tons of people saying, like, unconfirmed things, like they run into him at a show or a festival and talk to him, like, hey, whatever happened with right. Necrophages? And he'd either say, like, there's like, an album out there that just didn't get released, or oh, I kind of, you know, wandered off. All these are unconfirmed, though, so I'm not really entirely sure what he actually said. Yeah, like, there's nothing I've scoured the internet for. There's... Yeah. Nothing besides a couple random, you know, interviews, but he doesn't really say anything, and no one's ever been able to get that information out of him. I've, I've seen little, like, YouTube snippets where he appears at a show and people take pictures, and like, of course you're going to ask about necrophages. Uh, I mean, uh, as far as projects he has, there really isn't anything else. Like, this is it. And it just seemed as though this band sort of just disappeared in the studio. It kind of left everyone hanging because the, the teases for new material just seemed to keep coming up. And then it just didn't happen. So we're left with just two albums. And it kind of sucks. I would have liked to have seen them continue and oh, see what they've yeah, done. Oh, yeah, dude. Because it, it would have it progressed much like music progresses now. They just would have kept their reign at the top of technical death metal. What a shame. I, it still upsets me that there's no necrophages. But unfortunately, that is how necrophages' story ends, at least so far. Who knows? They might reunite. Highly improbable, I think. Crazier things have happened this year. I won't name anything, but crazier things yeah. have happened this year. Carcass got back together. Faith No More got back together. I suppose this is still very much the realm of possibility. I just think... I think he's just got to feel the passion for it again. Either that or just 
unearth those recordings, like, find out where they are. I'm, I'm curious what that would have sounded like. I never got to hear those new songs yeah, live. Yeah, You know, it's funny, now that Thralls has subscribers behind them and whatnot, and we talk to a lot of bands, and we talk to some record labels and PR for places and whatever, every now and again we'll ask the question, has anyone heard anything out of Necrophagist? And, like, just nobody knows. That sucks. So, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. Thank you guys so much for getting us to 2,000 subs. For sure. We yep. super appreciate it. Much and appreciated. Plenty of content coming. And again, more new faces coming as well. Yep. So we're kind of expanding this thing. And we're glad you're helping us expand that because that just shows you want more stuff from us. So with that, I thank you all very much. And we will catch you later. Take care.